<laughs> Hi everybody, how's it going? My name's Cam, so I'm an alcoholic. How are you all? I hope you're all doing well. This is a difficult one for me. I don't know why. So I made myself a cup of coffee, switched on my camera and decided I'm just going to push into it. So what's it about? It's about fear. I'm going to talk today about fear. Fear has been part of my life for as far back as I can remember, if I'm honest. At the moment, I am trying to build a new business, which, which came about at the beginning of November when I started the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. So as the second cohort of Part-Time YouTuber Academy is about to launch, in fact, we're now in induction week. So I'm going to tell my story and then get into the fear. So get yourself a cup of tea or coffee and sit back and enjoy my story. This morning I was feeling like, how am I going to make a video this week? It was like, I, I think I'm really starting to overthink it. I'm starting to, to feel that I need to have a script, that I need to have the elements of the hero's journey in my story, that I need all of these things that I've learned about in PTYA. And they are kind of holding me back, I think, from just switching on the camera and sharing my story. And something happened yesterday that kind of turned that around a bit for me, which was that I started listening to one of the recommended reading books from PTYA, which is a book called Storyworthy by Dan Kennedy and Matthew Dix. And I listened to the first half hour while I was out walking the dogs. And that half hour was enough for me to consider changing my approach and really just leaning into the storytelling aspect of my channel. Because what I want to do is I want to help other people to find sobriety and keep it. And that has happened for me. It's happened for me through 15 years of telling stories, telling my story in meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. But not only that, it's been 15 years of listening to other people tell their stories. And that has been incredibly valuable. Listening to other people's stories, finding identification with my own story, this is something that that people, not just alcoholics, but that everybody can relate to. And this is something that gets talked about in the book Storyworthy, about how standing up on stage at Moth, which I believe is a storytelling club in New York City, standing up on stage there and sharing authentic, authentic stories that show vulnerability. And that's what we get in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. We get authentic, genuine stories with people sharing their vulnerability. And that can really help the listener in their own journey of sobriety and recovery. So there really is no place in my channel for fear. And so this is something I need to address. I need to analyze this. So, I think my approach henceforth is going to be just to sit down, turn on the camera and just talk into the camera and see what comes out, almost like a live stream. There will be a little bit of editing, that will happen, but I am going to continue with the live streams too because I find them really useful and I really enjoy doing them and they encourage me to get out. I love walking the dogs with my device on a stick, walking through nature and just talking, telling stories talking about my day, whatever it might be, I find it really helpful and it's great practice for working on my storytelling as well. So let's go back to the beginning of Part-Time YouTuber Academy. When I went into that course in early November, I thought that my channel was going to be about guitars. And it is, I do have a guitar channel. It's at Acoustic Guitar IO if you want to check it out link up here, or is it up here? I can never remember which side that goes. 
So yeah, I am intending to continue building my guitar channel because that's my passion, my hobby, my interest. I love guitars, so that's going to keep happening. But for my main channel, I was considering going into MLM investing because to date, those have been some of the best performing videos on this channel when I talked about some of the investments that I've got into. But when PTY started, one of the features of the course and the premium membership which I was, was in was the morning and afternoon power hours. So we would get up, switch on our cameras and our mics and log into Zoom for 8 a.m. and then 2 p.m. in the afternoons. And the 8 a.m. power hour was hosted by Hassan Kuba. Now, Hassan is the co-author of a book called The Unfair Advantage. So at the beginning of the course, I showed up for the first power hour and I actually don't think I missed one. They were great, absolutely great for productivity. But in the first one, I was like, OK, this guy he seems like a stand-up guy. I'm going to buy his book and I'll check it out. So I did. I bought The Unfair Advantage and I went through to the bedroom and I lay on the bed with my Kindle and I read the introduction and by the time I'd read through maybe two pages I was like, I need a notebook. So I came through and I grabbed a notebook and a pen, got back to reading and as I was reading it, making notes, thinking about what my own unfair advantage might be, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like, Cams, you're sober. You have 15 years of sobriety. And you know how it works, right? You get to keep your sobriety by giving it away. Okay. And there it was. My niche had been staring me in the face the whole time and I hadn't even really been aware of it. So there it was, my niche. Now, the very first assignment in Part-Time YouTuber Academy was to make a video about your favourite thing. So a nice, easy introduction to the course. Just pick a thing you love and make a video about that. How challenging can that be? So I started thinking about, hmm, which guitar will I choose? I have five. Then I started thinking, no, maybe not guitars, maybe fountain pens, because in the first lesson, when Ali was given us the homework assignment, he said, do a video about your favourite things. And he looked round his desk and he picked up a pen. He said, it could be this, this pen. Make a video about that. So I thought it would be funny if I trolled him a little and made a video about a pen. Because, I mean, it wasn't quite trolling because I do love fountain pens. I love stationery in general, but fountain pens in particular. So I started thinking about what pen I could make my video about. And then, as I say, I read Hassan's introduction to the book and I was like, OK, I'm going to make my first video about the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's what I did. I basically turned on my camera, talked into my mic, described my experience of getting sober and how finding Alcoholics Anonymous saved my life. And the response I got was incredible. It really was overwhelming and it showed me that I had made the right decision. So I continued through Part-Time YouTuber Academy working out how to grow this newly found niche on YouTube and I'm still doing it now. But one of the things that's come off the back of that, and this is where I'm getting to the fear that I've been facing today, at the end of PTY, Hassan and his co-author Ash Ali, they did a webinar which we were all invited to, which was basically a sales pitch for their coaching program. And when they talked about it, I mean, I had built up a nice relationship with Hassan. I'd got to know him quite well just through power hours and through a bit of back and forth on social media. And he had reached out to tell me that this was happening and we'd, we'd booked a call and done a one-on-one -on -one call, which was a sales pitch, you know, but it was really a, a kind of precursory coaching call where Hassan went through what I was thinking of doing and we talked about how he thought it could go for me and how he thought coaching could help me. 
Now this is something that Ali Abdal talks about during the part-time YouTuber Academy is that for him, one of the life hacks, or one of the ways that he stacks the deck, which is a term that he uses to talk about how we can use our unfair advantages to help to grow our businesses. So how he stacks the deck is to pay for coaching because it gives you accountability. It gives you all sorts of ways of growing your business and getting out of your own way, right? Imposter syndrome, fear, accountability, all of these things. So during the call with Hassan, I got quite excited. And the reason for that is because one of the things that came up during the webinar was the idea that maybe I'm a coach. Maybe I'm already a coach. And I put the question out during the webinar in the chat because, I mean, the, the chat was filled with PTYA graduates and so we all knew each other quite well. They knew my content, they knew my style, they knew my value. And so I put the question out in the chat. Do you think I am a recovery coach? And the response was unanimously positive. And that's when I got to thinking, okay, this is a business opportunity for me. You might not know this, but I've been basically unemployed since I sold my post office business at the end of 2019. And I started building a social media marketing business round about that time and was getting a little bit of traction, but then pandemic hit. And it turned out, I think, that that wasn't really the sort of thing I was going to be any good at. I didn't know that when I went in. I was excited about it, but I don't think I was very good at it. So I learned that and I'm looking at that failure as a learning opportunity. But with coaching, I think I will be good at it. I've already kind of done my, what would I call it, feasibility study, possibly, through the part-time YouTube Academy, sharing my experience, strength and hope, telling my story in public with a degree of authenticity and vulnerability. And I think that that has shown me that I can do this. It's also shown me that it's something I enjoy. This is something I really, really want to do. The idea of helping even just one person to find sobriety, to keep sobriety, and to start to achieve goals on the back of that, that just, it makes my life worth living, you know? And a big part of what I've discovered, this partly came about through studying with August Bradley, just before Part-Time YouTube Academy started. You know, August Bradley does some amazing videos on YouTube. You can check out his channel where he talks about his life operating system and how he uses an application called Notion to basically manage everything in his life. So I studied with August and the thing that came to me from that was the idea of guiding principles. Now, I'd never heard of guiding principles before Maybe you have, another word for it is values. So it's basically about working out what your values are in life and then aligning everything in your life towards achieving those values. And I heard the same concept come up in a book that was recommended during PTYA called The E-Myth Revisited. In that book, they called it something else. Primary purpose, it might have been. The idea that, think about what somebody might share about you at your funeral that's your primary purpose right maybe I'm getting mixed up with AA because our primary purpose is to, to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety So, but it all aligns you see, primary purpose value goals guiding principles these are all concepts that have been swirling around my head but I'd never really conceptualize them properly and come up with my own ideas. I have now. And it came to me through making my podcast, out walking the dogs, talking into my microphone, just riffing in a kind of mental health way, which is something I found to be incredibly valuable. And that's when it came to me, just talking, just talking out loud onto a microphone. And the idea that my values are sobriety, to be a good husband, to be a good father, 
to be kind to others, to be non-judgmental, to be fearless. I think that kind of sums it up. And I can reach those values by helping other people. This is a thing that I know to be true. I have experienced it. But it's a thing I need to practice. I need to practice these principles in all my affairs, right? To get back to the AA 12-step program, which is how I got sober. So by being kind to people, something so simple, that will help my own recovery, my own sobriety, my own sense of self-worth, self-esteem, fear. All of these things will be helped by something so simple as being kind to others. I mean, it's not groundbreaking, right? But I wasn't doing it. <laughs> I was not doing it. Now this is where the transformation has come and it's come through basically stepping into this role as a recovery coach, as somebody who's willing to spend time with others to help them to find what I have so that what I have can be enhanced and get better and I can become the best version of me that I can be. And fear has no place in that, right? So it's interesting. Now that I'm starting to build this business, working with a business coach, coming up with action plans, things that I need to do, and the idea of having someone reach out to me, me, you know, imposter syndrome. It fills me with fear. The idea that somebody might find my content, somebody that I don't already know, they might think, yes, I want what he has, and they reach out and they ask. Well, honestly, that would be like a dream come true. But at the same time, it's like, what if they actually do it? <laughs> It's like when, when I was looking for gigs, playing, I play guitar around the, the Isle of Arran here, and I play in hotels and restaurants, or I did at least before pandemic. And one time when I was feeling particularly fearless and excited and encouraged and motivated, I sent letters out to the different hotels, letting them know that I was available, what my rates were, what my style was, here's a link to some of my playing if you want to check it out. And once I'd done it, I sat back in fear that they would actually reply and say, yes, let's book you. That, that's what I'm talking about. So this is where the coaching really helps me because I know that that fear is, is unfounded. I've had enough feedback from peers that what I'm putting out there is helpful. In fact, this morning, I got a really nice message from a stranger on LinkedIn who'd seen one of my posts and gave me some really kind comments about what I'm doing right now and how helpful it could be for others. So Belinda, if you're watching this, I thank you most sincerely for taking the time to comment on my LinkedIn post. Thank you. So that's really all I wanted to share today. The idea of stepping into the fear and just doing it anyway. What's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> no bears are going to eat me. There are no tigers around waiting for me to fail so that they can eat me. It's, it's just a case of finding the belief in myself, however that may come, through peer support, through coaching, and doing the next little thing that's going to help me to build my business. So I am very excited for this year. I think it's going to be a good year. And I actually feel a lot better having just switched on the camera and talked my way out of this. You know, it's Thursday already. I normally like to have my video published by Thursday and I hadn't even thought about an idea. Nothing had come to me. So that's me for today, folks. I hope you found this valuable. If you have, leave a comment because that really helps me. It helps me to get over my fear. I know that you might be out there suffering and you feel that you want to remain anonymous and that's absolutely fine. I will always be respectful of people's anonymity because that's how it works. But if you feel able to leave a comment, to like my video, subscribe to my channel because that really, really helps my growth on the channel. YouTube is an algorithm-based system. There aren't people there promoting my videos based on what's in them. It's based on likes, watch time, comments, engagement, shares, 
all that stuff that costs nothing to you. It's just a case of clicking a few things. So if you could see your way to doing that, that would be fantastic. And speaking of fear, I'm going to leave you with a video. This is a video that I shared quite recently that talks about a time when I was feeling a lot of fear as a student, when I was studying Russian literature at St Andrews University. And you might have heard the phrase fear described as forget everything and run. The F, of course, could mean something else. Well, in that video, that's what happened. I did forget everything and I ran away. <laughs> but on the back of that came my first spiritual awakening. So check it out if you would like to see that video. I'll thank you for watching and remember... You're not alone. Bye for now.